Here's a map of the slave trade, transatlantic slave trade, right? So we have this idea, we talk about African-American. Africa is the most genetically diverse continent on earth. Of course, that's where human beings have been the longest, so it's the most genetically diverse. The slave trade brought Africans here from very small regions of Africa. Those of you who identify as African-American, but technically you're not African-American. You're West Central African-American. Because your genetic admixture and who you are and what you look like, and if I brought Africans up here, 10 students from Africa up to the front, and you all lined up, you would see these very distinct features of the African students. But what we see is with the slave trade, meaning Africans that came to South America and the Caribbean, which is the vast majority of Africans who were brought to the Americas in the slave trade, and then in North America, all come from particular regions of Africa. Relatively small and isolated regions. So you could say, yeah, I'm African American. Well, really, if you want to kind of get a little bit specific, talk about I'm West Central African American. African Americans, what we use that term mostly, and again, anyone can choose how they want to identify, but mostly we use that term to refer to North Americans, people in the United States who derive their ancestry from slavery. And so African American, you can define it any way you want, right? But so yeah. now we start doing genetic work. And we right? want to sort of see the ways in which genes play out in particular populations. And then we lump all black people together. And we say, okay, hey, we're gonna like, we're gonna, we're gonna look at, you know, white genes and black genes and Asian genes. And it's like, wait, hang on a second. And then we're just gonna focus on black genes. What are we talking about, right? We're gonna look at African Americans and then we're gonna compare African Americans to who? Sudanese? People from Somalia over here. When we take black Americans, whether it's in South America, Central America, or North America, black Americans who trace their ancestry to slavery, they're most genetically connected to Africans of these particular regions. You, 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 see, you see the connection here, right? And they'll look, they look alike. So if I take Nigerians in here, yeah, I mean, there are, different tri there are different groups and so on and so forth, but people even most closely resemble people, right? Because it's just like people of Asians or Europeans. White people don't all look alike, my friends. You see white people that look different. So let me show you what, how this matters. So CJ, your grandmother, who, so who's, who's white? Um, well, my great-grandma, but my grandma's like... Your great-grandma's? Yeah. It's white? Yeah. And then your grandma is was like pretty much white too yeah. and then okay so hang on a second what's your what, what's your ancestry i'm like, haitian my you're haitian and my dad. so if we did a dna test on you you're, you're gonna roll you're gonna you're gonna roll 100 percent sub-saharan african but actually we say sub-saharan but if i go back so you're, you're gonna be right in here somewhere in the in the central west coast and okay and then what what's your name julia Julia, and who's white, who's black? Who's... Uh, my mom's Polish-Italian and my dad's Jamaican. Your mom's Polish-Italian? Does she clean? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Okay, so listen. So here's the deal. Here's why this, this map. Why don't you, no, this is good. So look, let's say I'm doing, I'm in the medical world or I'm doing, it's something where genetics starts to matter in some way, right? And I just say, Here's three black people who identify as black. Julia's genetic admixture is really different from, wait, Tanya? Kayla. Kayla, I was close, man. <laughs> Which is very different than CJ's. Even though, Kay look at Kayla and CJ, they look the same. Like you wouldn't know, right? But he's got all this white admixture in him. And so let's say you're really involved and that it matters somehow, right? His whiteness might really matter. There might be some genetic, parts of him that really are going to stand out and matter even for health issues or whatever, right? So here, look at this. You can turn around. So a buddy of mine did some research to understand how much white blood there is in the African American community. And so he studied, they studied the Gullah peoples off the coast of Georgia, on average 3.5% white, okay? So it's really black. So these would be like Haitians, essentially, right? Very few. But as you start to move away, and you start to move north, and then you start to move west, the percentage of white blood increases because there are fewer black people and there's much more intermarriage. Okay, there are fewer opportunities for finding partners. By the time you get up to Seattle and Portland, on average, black 
Washingtonians and black Oregonians are 35% white. So, like, if, these, if genetics is what we're looking at and we're really focused on it, like, but you have different genes. You could say you're black. I know many people who are mixed, like you, who would have your skin tone and so on, who would still say, oh, yeah, I'm black. But, but you're not black, right? I mean, you are. You can, be black. you can be anything you want. If I want to call myself black, whatever. Let me call myself black. But the issue is you're not. But the idea is that when we're looking at admixture and when we start getting into health, and these kinds of things in medicine, and we start doing stuff about, maybe we're trying to find cancer cure, and we're doing immunology and cancer and using genetics and so on. These kinds of things will really come into play, and then they matter how we think about these populations. Bro, do you ever talk about your white grand, great-grandmother and stuff? Like what? Yeah, I credit her for me having good hair. For being what? For me having good hair. For having, here's, here's another way in which sociology can really kind of get in the way of these things. Look, man, we know, we know that the Americas were populated by people crossing over the Bering Strait in Asia and coming down into the Americas. We also know that they may have, people may have come and it appears as though people came from other directions. And so people have this idea in the, in the sort of black scholarship world, this idea that Africans actually were the first people to come to the Americas. And there's some evidence of this, right? That, but it was Africans. It actually may have, in fact, been the Negritos who came over. It's a shorter trip. The trade winds are easier. And it may be that what we see as evidence of Africans is actually evidence of the Negrito people of Asia who are, look African-American, look just like CJ, but in fact are Asian because they're uh, from the I New Guinea and the Polynesian Islands and Australia and so on. But in any case, this is the idea that people, cro Asians crossed over this street, okay? So now, who's Native American? A, B, C, or D? A, it's actually A and all the rest are from this region. Well, what changes them? They probably share the exact same admixture, but one's Asian and one's Native American. Who's Native American and who's Chinese? Han ancestry. So Han Chinese. One is Han Chinese and one is Navajo. Bro, which one is it, man? You better get this right, my friend. The bottom one is Chinese? What makes you say that? Because the building, it looks like a Chinese building behind. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, have you ever been on She looks Chinese? What about her looks Chinese? Her, her teeth? I don't know. Yeah? No, no, no. But Han Chinese. It is, it, she is the one who's Chinese. But, but if you didn't know that, like you wouldn't necessarily, you wouldn't necessarily know. You just look at them and they're like, oh yeah. So if you took her to China, or you took her to the Navajo reservation, the Navajo would know and the Chinese would know. You'd probably be like, oh, hang on a second. But nobody else would know. I wouldn't know, you know? And so, look, the thing is, when you're try looking at people on the out, we have this idea that there are Asians, the Asian race, the black race, the white race. Like, somehow these are distinct in these three categories, and they actually really fall into one another in, in fascinating and complex ways. Here, let me show you a different one, right? Hispanic or Latino is a sociological category. So everyone who identifies as Hispanic or Latino or Latinx, can you just stand really fast? Yeah, so look, look at the different, look, just look around the room. Dark-skinned people of African ancestry. Bro, where's your family from? Dominican Republic. Dominican Republic, Panama. These are, these are areas, so these are Africans populating the planet. You're mixed, clearly, right? You have like Puerto Rico and Ecuador. Yeah, you can see that in you, right? Yeah, I mean, I can see, you, I see like certain, you have European features, but some indigenous features, right? Yeah, Latinas, <laughs> Latina. Yeah. All right, hang on. Okay, everybody sit down, bro, except you, right? Yeah. Can you just, but look at his indigenous features, right? So these are the people, Justin, your people. Yeah, so sure. Justin, his ancestors were ones that crossed over the Bering Strait, came down into the Americas, and you can see his nose. Dude, hang on. You have just have an awesome, do you mind? Yeah, bro? no, okay. see, see this, like, see this little bump right there? Boom, see that? Can you, can you get a nice close-up? Oh, dude, you have an awesome little bump. Yeah, see that? See that right there? 
did that, that's just that's so typical of indigenous peoples in the Americas, right? So as soon as I see you, I, I'm like, okay, there's your indigenous blood. Then, but then I look around at others of you who stood up, you're of European ancestry, so the Europeans come in. And so Latin America is a mix of Europeans and Africans and indigenous people, wait, hang on, hang on. Hispanic or Latina, we can talk about the distinctions between them or Latinx are not race categories. It's a, it's a ethnic or cultural category. So if, when someone says they're Hispanic, they could be white, they could be black, they could be indigenous. You're a mix of, you're not purely indigenous, you also have white blood in you, right? You may have a little bit of black blood, but probably not, right, in looking at you, right? And so my friend just researched in Mexico and yellow, so he was collecting data in all parts of Mexico, and you just see these, re these differences, right? So if you, anyone, anyone ever been down to this area in Mexico? When you go down there, it's very indigenous, right? Lots of indigenous peoples. So this is like kind of Oaxaca down here, and you come in, or the, but then you have the yellow. This was a slave port. Here's, here's the value. Someone says they're Mexican. It's like, where are you from in Mexico? Like, what's, what's your genetic admixture, right? These are slave ports here. So, so you're going to have lots of black people. You're going to have, like, a, a larger-than-average black population. And when you take DNA out of people, right, you could look at their DNA, you analyze their DNA, they're going to have much more African admi in their admixture. Here, you know, red is indigenous and blue is European, and so, you know, we just see like how different it is all over. That's how the whole world is. Just like the previous slide when I showed you the, the percentage of white blood in people of African ancestry in the United States. It's cool, right? 